Hello, I'm Dr Lloyd Wood, a research fellow here at the Centre for Communication Systems Research at the University of Surrey. My research area is space networking, getting more networking and computing abilities onto satellites and space probes in space. We started doing this work by working with Surrey Satellite Technology Limited, or SSTL. SSTL is a spin-off of the University of Surrey and has recently been sold to EADS Astrium. On the desk by me you can see a model of a Surrey satellite. And SSTL has built these satellites, put them in low Earth orbit, and has gradually added better and better cameras to them to take photographs of the ground. So they now have what we call remote sensing capability. They're able to image areas of the ground uh, provide information on crops, on grow the growing towns for uh, population measurement and for the aftermath of disasters. SSTL has built a number of satellites that they call the Disaster Monitoring Constellation or DMCs and these DMC satellites have provided imagery in the aftermath of hurricanes, uh, tsunamis, earthquakes, very useful imagery for disaster responders. We were able to work on experimenting with the network in space by putting a Cisco Systems Internet router on board SSTL's UK DMC satellite. Doing that allowed us to show that a router would work in the space environment and it allowed us to do tests and demonstrations with uh, internet technology from space. We ran a web server in space, we did the first tests of the new internet protocol IPv6 from space and we also experimented with mobile networking and seamless handovers. That's led the way to putting an internet router on a geostationary spacecraft now. Now traditional geostationary satellites are big uh, dumb kind of repeaters in the sky. You send up a signal, you frequency shift it and amplify it and it goes down to a wide broadcast area. That's very good for television broadcast but that model does not work so well when you have two terminals that want to communicate with each other via satellite. Quite often the first terminal says, OK, I want to talk to another terminal. The signal goes up to the satellite, is amplified and frequency shifted and comes down to a central hub. Then the hub looks at the transmission and says, OK, that's not going across to the terrestrial network or, an or the internet. It's got to go to this terminal that's also talking to the satellite. The signal goes back up to the satellite and then down to the terminal where it needs to be. So we've done two hops to, to complete the call. By moving the smarts from the hub on the ground onto the satellite, we shorten the double hop problem, as we call it. We make the satellite smarter. And putting an internet router at geostationary orbit, and that's currently be, being played with as a follow-on to the initial router on the UK DMC satellite, allows us to experiment with that, and it's now offering a limited service. The reason why satellites have not adopted networking fully is that satellite communications actually started before modern networking as we know it. As did communication with space probes. Space probes would send back the data of what they saw to the Earth to be picked up by NASA's Deep Space Network, which is three large dishes on the Earth so that you can always see one dish as the Earth rotates. This is fairly simple streaming. There's not that much networking in the space environment. We have some communication between the Mars rovers and the Mars orbiters. So the rovers send data to the orbiters which then relay it onto Earth. Uh, the Phoenix rover is a good example of this because it can't talk to Earth directly, it must relay via the orbiter. We also have an example of networking with the Cassini-Huygens uh, Titan probe where the Huygens probe dropped into Titan's atmosphere, relayed information to the orbiter which relayed it onwards. But we don't have that much networking in the space environment. We've experimented with improving this um, there is a research effort called the Interplanetary Internet Effort, which aims to get more networking into the space environment and get the space probes moving to a more computer networking kind of mindset. We were able to do the very first tests of the Interplanetary Internet on board the UK DMC satellite, working with uh, NASA Glenn Research Centre. And we tested the bundle protocol, which is used for the Interplanetary Internet and for what we call delay tolerant networking. We tested that from space and we were able to use our practical experience and our theoretical experience to look at how the protocol works and make suggestions to improve its overall design. The way that we carried this interplanetary internet protocol was using a data delivery protocol developed at SSTL. We call it Saratoga. Now, Saratoga was designed to get imagery from the satellite to the ground as quickly as possible. It runs really quickly. 
when we talk about the internet, we often talk about the information superhighway. And that's a nice metaphor because it gives you the idea of cars and cars braking because there are other cars in front of them and they're sharing the road. Um, and that's what normal internet protocols like the transmission control protocol, TCP, do. If they see that the roads are congested, they go very slowly. Now, by contrast, Saratoga is kind of like a Japanese bullet train. It's built for speed to get from A to B as quickly as possible, non-stop. So it downloads data really, really quickly, and we built it to be scalable because we wanted it to be able to handle any size file. Because with the effects of Moore's law, the camera capabilities, the onboard computing capabilities are scaling upwards really quickly, and we didn't want to hit any kind of limit. So we built this very scalable protocol, and this attracted the attention of networkers working for the astronomy community to build what they call very long baseline interferometers, VLBIs. One example of this is the Square Kilometer Array, which is an absolutely massive planned uh, phased array network that will be spread out over an entire continent, over thousands of kilometers. It's called the Square Kilometer Array because the actual sensor area of the uh, sensors is one square kilometer, but these sensors are distributed very widely to give you a very large view of the sky. And all these sensors have to be backhauled via optical fiber with massive data requirements at very, very high speeds. The Saratoga protocol that we developed for taking imagery from the satellite to ground turns out to be very useful for transferring imagery of the sky across the ground as well. So we're going to be doing some tests on that later this year. It's pretty exciting to see a protocol developed here at Surrey have real-world applications, uh, not just for transferring remote sensing imagery that's useful in the aftermath of disasters, but also for good scientific applications like astronomy. It's an exciting time.